is it. This is our opening topic, the Baldo. No, dear God, please. <laughs> God damn it. I love the the how it works fucking like cartoon gifts. Yeah. Like when it lubes up the balls, they just turn shiny. I was going to say, since we do a gaming podcast, maybe we can talk about video games. No, type in Baldo into the random topic generator. What's the video game that you all are looking forward to the most? The video game that I'm looking forward to the most? I mean, besides Monster Hunter Rise, since you're apparently like... No, dude. Pokemon Snap. Wait, them remaking Pokemon Snap? Oh, yeah, yeah. They have another Pokemon Snap coming out next month. This month. That looks so good. Oh, dude. My 20th erection for the day. Dude, I'm so fucking pumped for that. I'm actually more excited for Pokemon Legends, though. Pokemon Legends looks like it's going to be badass. But Pokemon Snap? Oh my god, bring back the nostalgia. Have you guys seen the Pokemon Snap parody? No. No. Pokemon Snap Triple X. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually excited for this uh, kind of Dark Souls game where you play as a... Ah, uh, fuck. Plague Doctor. And you use disease to kill people. Interesting. What is this? Uh, it's not out yet. The date of it is to be confirmed, but I've been seeing videos of it everywhere. And it just looks so beautiful. Uh, it's called Thymesia. Thymesia. I'll type it in Discord. That sounds like a hentai game. Yes, it does. It does. Apparently, I, I typed in it wrong because... What did it bring up, though? <laughs> Thymysia Rabirio Regel. Apparently, a 19... Wait, that doesn't make any... Okay, 1898 to 1982 family search. <laughs> Apparently, this was a person that lived in Brazil. Huh. Not anymore, though. <laughs> they might still be in Brazil, but they're not alive. Oh, okay. I spelled that way wrong. Let me guess, you put Thy and Mia. Oh, I put T H I M I S I A. Thymesia. For some reason, that reminds me of this game. Like, it's nothing like this game, but when you say Plague Doctor, I think of Astrala Gaster. Is it Astrala Jaster or Astrala Gaster? Astrala Jaster. That game is fun as shit. Not gonna lie, this game looks baller. They've restocked and sold out of PS5s like the very minute they restocked. Jesus, really? Yeah. My coworker was able to get a PS5 from Target down the street. He had to order it and go pick it up whenever they had restocked, but that was the only way he could get it. Jesus. Impossible to get a PS5 right now. Yeah. Why? Scalpers. I know, but it's crazy. People, they bought up all of the inventory and then they tried to sell it at a price that was ridiculously high. Oh, yes. People suck. So like 5,000 or something or more. Jesus. Like it was a ridiculous sell yeah. asking price for it. You guys ever take a drink out of a soda can and get your lip piercing stuck on it? Well, yeah, when I was younger. I don't have a lip piercing. No, because I don't have a lip piercing, but uh, I left a soda can right next to my computer and I went back to take a drink out of it and there was a bee inside. So that's terrifying. That was that was so much fun. I was like, mm, this tastes good. Did you eat it? No. <laughs> I spit it out as soon as I felt it. Was it a silly wasp? <laughs> Did it sting you in the bum bum? No, no, no. Hey, that's your fault. You're the one that sent that video. It was Barry B. Benson. I spit it out and he's like, you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> There was a topic, random topic generator that says, how many pets do you have? What are they? I have a horse. His name is Gerald. And I have a cow. His name is Bob. Those oh. are my pets. I got three pets. I got a cat named Moach. I got a four-year-old named Dylan and a hedgehog <laughs> named Marshmallow. Do you really have a hedgehog? I do, actually. That is so cute. I love hedgehogs. He's an... He's an asshole. That's okay. Yeah. 
I went on a random <laughs> topic speech generator. It was uh, the five topics that came up was the justice system, messing people, Call of Duty, luggage, and prejudice against a group of your choice. What? Ah, thank God. I can choose who I want to be prejudiced against. Finally. I choose all of them. <laughs> people. Okay, we were, we were talking about pets, yes. I have a lot of pets. I live in a zoo. I have four guinea pigs, Betty, Hannah, Samantha, Amanda, two dogs, Bruiser, Maggie, and our roommates have two dogs and a cat, Lucy, Mason, and Tommy. Jesus, fuck. So we have nine animals. Yeah, you live in a house. I live in an apartment. I can only have, like, two pets. And they are? My horse and my cow. (laughs) And they are (laughs) dead. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's my cat. So my cat Frodo, which you guys saw, and my dog Nala, who's a medium-sized lap Springer Spaniel, and she's an absolute bitch. Aww. But <laughs> yeah, Bruiser's an asshole. She's so horrible. You can hear her in the background. So we live in an apartment. Just any slight noise. Okay, your cats, Logan. How many cats do you have? I only have one. He's a fucking genocidal maniac. <laughs> Anytime he goes to my wardrobe, he just screams and runs about. He knows how to open a wardrobe door, and I don't know how. And it's like a sliding door, and the doors are heavy. That's not a cat. Yeah, well, you've seen Roxas. He's a gremlin. He's a gremlin. True that, dude. Dude, he's got the biggest nuts I've ever seen. (laughs) Are you saying that he could use a baldo? (laughs) Yes, that's exactly right. (laughs) Do they make the cat version of those? Oh, no. Hey, uh, do you want a death wish? Try to put your cat's nuts in a baldo. <laughs> That's even worse than trying to clip their nails. Hey, I, c- I can clip Roxas's nails, no problem. He just lays down there. You can clip his nails? I Because my, my tired brain went, you can clip his nuts. And I'm like, you're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine like being there to take a pair of nail clippers and clip your nuts. I don't even have nuts, and that's a painful thought. What am I being given? (laughs) What am I being given for that? I need to hear the terms before I agree to anything. Okay, you know nail clippers, like, you know, toenail clippers? Well, yeah, they're used to clip nails. Yes. Imagine that, but you have to, like, pinch your nuts with it. How small are your nuts, Logan? (laughs) Go on. (laughs) (laughs) Or how big are your toenail clippers? (laughs) Yeah, how big are your clippers? They regrow every year. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, shing. Yeah, every spring my voice goes back to this. (laughs) (laughs) You take out the knife. He's like, please, no. (laughs) What the fuck are we even doing? I don't know. Any brand new game that you try to get that doesn't seem to want to work for you? Ah, uh, nah. Uh, Cali Floor 2 still refuses to work for me. Which is so shit. I want to play that with you really bad. Yeah. It's really fun. But you still have to play GTFO with us. Yes, you do. I do. It's really fun. I just downloaded it. I was going to say, there's a lot to say about it. There's a lot of criticisms to make, I think. It took us... Uh, how many tries to get past the first level? Like eight. I've lost count. I think it was like 20 different tries. I've actually played a lot of it on my own, and it's ridiculously hard. You almost need four people to play with because if you don't have, if you try to do it by yourself, there are just not enough resources for you to kill all of the enemies. It's just almost impossible. And mines are your best friend. Yeah, definitely. The mines the mines are really good. We found out two people with mines and two people with the centuries is probably the best way to go. Yes. Speaking of GTFO, we're going to GTFO out of these random topics and get into the main topic of discussion, Crypt of the Necrodancer. I'm still upset that there's no, like, you know, breakdance in Necromancer. The very last boss is the Necrodancer. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like a necromancer at a rave. Yeah. You know, glow sticks around his neck. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's no rave necro dancer. He has a bra on, even though he's a guy. <laughs> he has those light up gloves where he's like. <laughs> he has a mankini like Borat. A singlet. 
Have you guys seen pictures of me at a rave? <laughs> Stop, my penis can only get so erect. <laughs> Did they just stop making Mario games? Are you talking about the Mario is dead thing? The the two that yeah. they, from what I read, the two that they made for the 35th anniversary last March, um, the Super Mario uh, 35, which is the original Super Mario Brothers, but sort of like um, group combat style where- Battle every, Royale? The Battle Royale, yeah. Every enemy that you kill gets pushed over to someone else's screen. There's 35 people- battling to see who could win it and then the super mario 3d all-stars where they released every single of one of the old ones from the nes the super nintendo um all that other stuff they took it off of the market at, at the end of march uh, i think it was like the 22nd or whatever because they were using 31st. 31st 31st they were using that as a uh th- this is what's making his 35th anniversary more special we're gonna artificially limit this thing and yeah yeah you know, so then everybody was tweeting, Mario is dead. And I was like, what the fuck? Hold on. Wait, wait. No, he's not. He's not dead. He's just in a coma. This is Joysticks and Lunatics, where four friends get together and talk about crazy stuff in games. I'm guinea pig poop. Yeah, welcome welcome to the podcast. That, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that was awesome. And I'm Overpowered Peaches. Then I'm Benjamin Dude Guy. <laughs> and I am crippling depression. <laughs> yeah, you are. He's always something else. Yeah. It's Kermit the Frog. His name. It's the thumbnail artist. It's crippling depression. <laughs> well, well, I I am half crippled right now and I have full time depression. <laughs> full time depression. <laughs> I have the crutches to prove it. So you're not crippling depression, you're crippled depression. I went four years to school for for a PhD in depression. <laughs> I am Dr. Depression. That was me in high school and a year of college. Today we're talking about Crypt of the Necrodancer. It is an award-winning, hardcore, roguelike rhythm game with an award-winning soundtrack by Danny Baranowski. Fuck yeah. Did you say award-winning or award-rimming? I probably said award rimming because award winning is really hard to say. (laughs) The developers, Brace Yourself Games, the publishers, I don't know how to say that. Klee? 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 Yeah, Klee. Klee? Klee Entertainment. Yeah. It's on everything except Android. It was released on April the 23rd, 2015. It is a roguelike rhythm game. You can play single player or you can also, there was something on Steam that, what was it called? You can remote play together but i don't know what that means yeah loki multi local multiplayer i tried that out by myself just out of curiosity and it splits your screen and then it plays one of the characters on one one of the characters on the other one of you uses the directional keys the other one uses wasd so i thought that was kind of interesting oh really i saw like old sale flash games yeah so it's a local multiplayer that you know, you don't have to have a second account or, or buying the game again in order to play with somebody that's in mm-hmm. like the same house as you. Yeah. Oh my God. Can you imagine though? Like if you just wanted to challenge yourself, you could just play two player oh, in just one hand WASD and one hand direction. Oh shit. That would be fucking crazy. You high fiving me? <laughs> no, my what camera went blurry and I don't know why it did that. So I was just like trying to get it to refocus. Look at oh, that oh, shit. No, it's all gone. <laughs> hey, you guys can't see, that? so I can take my pants off now. No, mine doesn't do that. It just does weird lighting shit. Mine has a well, manual. Yeah, focus. because you don't now have. Now you guys can see my lifeline. <laughs> cool. You I'm going to die in seven days. That's because you guys don't have like a $600 Ooh. camera. So. Well, clearly your $600 camera sucks at focusing. It's not it's not six hundred dollars. I'm kidding. It's five ninety nine ninety nine. Five ninety nine ninety nine. That's exactly right. Six easy payments of nine nine ninety eight. When you go to the local whorehouse and you uh pay for a a, a scary whore, five ninety nine ninety nine. A scary whore. I actually have a streamer friend who is a stripper as well, and like she comes back with a fuck ton of money after every shift. Maybe you need to take up stripping. You might need to. Well, I can't, I can't account with my leg. Dude, <laughs> you have no idea. There is such a market for that right now. Yeah, there's a niche for that. 
she empty she calls the basically the um, the bag where she puts all her money in that she gets at the end of the night called a stripper bag. Give it up for Logan. <laughs> <laughs> what my <am I>, horse? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Put my gammy leg around, around the fucking <laughs> pole and just scream in agony as I slide around it? He <laughs> just wraps his legs around the pole and ties them into a knot on the other side. <laughs> now you just bend you over up. it. You crawl <laughs> up it. You fall down, land on your eyes, go, ah! And it's just <laughs> I was just gonna say, bend over and rub your butt on the pole and grin suggestively. The I whole have time. no cheeks, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> he has no, yeah, he has no ass to land on, so he's gotta like stuff his ass with pillows. All that I can guarantee is friction burn and a few like skid marks. Chokes on you. I'm into that. Your ass is so shallow. Your cheeks are deeper than your crack. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> okay, do we want to move on? <laughs> I don't know. We tried. <laughs> do we, we want failed. to do the game here? Okay, yes. What did we say? I don't remember what we said already. We got up to the rating. We got up to the rating mm-hmm. here. Obviously, I had a fucking hundred percent on Steam. Everything's a hundred percent on Steam. Yeah. The fucking hentai neighbors <laughs> game has a hundred percent on Steam. Hentai neighbors. <laughs> well, it's user rating. That's why, because it's a user rating. The Steam reviews are the best thing in the world, though. Oh my god, they oh, 100%. are. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I actually found out uh, that this game was at PAX. I'm not sure if it was PAX East or PAX West, PAX North, PAX South, whatever. PAX is just weird. But yeah, uh, this game was actually like shown at a, what would you call it, like a kind of gaming show-off for small developers in 2013 at the at PAX. So it must have been like a beta build that they showed off. It had amazing reception. Everyone loved it. And like Destructoid named it as one of our most favorited entries in the last few years. And also Joystick, not us. Also <laughs> gave it a very positive review. Yeah, this was this was a lot older than I expected. Yeah. I heard about it and I think in 2017 when everybody was talking about it, but yeah, I was actually surprised. It's been out since 2015, though. Yeah, that's what I was surprised about, because I didn't know that the game was that old. I had it in my Steam library since 2017. Never played it. Here it is. Fuck Christ, four years later, and I'm finally getting around to playing the damn game. Wait a minute. 2017 was four years ago? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's fucked up. It is so fucked up. Do you really want to feel old? The Simpsons movie came out 14 years ago. What? Didn't Shrek come out 20 years ago? Mario came out 35 years ago. Jesus. I already feel old. I'm ar- almost 30. I'm a- I already feel old. Yeah, well, I have the oldest body out of all these. I don't know. I've had back surgery. Okay, so the development of this game started in 2011. Ryan Clark, who was the creator and program. Uh, programmer he was the program he was inspired by (laughs) roguelike games just roguelike games in general yeah (laughs) so refresh so refresh our memories here banjo so roguelite games are certain elements that uh certain elements change and certain elements stay the same roguelike games are where basically everything changes as soon as you die and when the fire nation attacks yes yes exactly Going back to GTFO for a second, it is actually a roguelite game where every single time you die, both the enemies and the items that you get are randomly generated throughout the level. Right, but not the yeah, map itself. Yeah, we know that because Pete just set off like at least 10 of them at once. Oh, you should have seen what me and Guinea were doing this morning with uh, with these monsters. I was like, Giddy, don't, don't alert them. Don't do anything. I fire my gun. And then just hundreds of them come down and kill us. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, don't wake them up. And I instantly wake them up. <laughs> okay. So Clark's idea of the title came after a discovery of this concept and the pun for Necrodancer. 
So he likes this particular genre of game because of the trial and error type feel. Uh, and boy, howdy, does it have that kind of element in this. I, I've, I've tried oh, to beat dude. this first level a billion times. And oh my God. <laughs> it took me 20 yeah. hours of gameplay to beat it. I've gotten to the fourth floor of zone one and that's the furthest I've gotten. So in comparison to another roguelike game, which is Spelunky Clark, which I've heard of this one too. Oh, Spelunky. If you look at gameplay, I also put in brackets, ask Genny how it took her 20 hours to beat one area. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that one. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. A game, apparently Spelunky Clark, he said about the game that it is really hard, but you can still improve. So after some research, Clark found that removing turn-based nature, removing turn-based nature in roguelite in-game, examples are Faster Than Light and Spelunky Clark, uh, lost some of the flavors of roguelikes. Clark was running ideas and finally settled on using turns where each turn lasted a certain amount of time. So he programmed the game so the player would have to be accurate to the beat of the music which is similar to rhythm-based games, which we already said this was a rhythm-based RPG. It's still a bastard that the enemies move uh, every half beat. Actually, they, he had um, said it at the beginning that they um, move every half beat, but then he changed it back to where they move with the beat, but each of them move on a different rhythm. So like, some of them move like, every other beat or some of them have like different right. attack patterns like every third beat and stuff right like that. exactly but each one of those actually move the same every like throughout the entire game so once you know it it's easier to to predict as your skill gets better you can get better in the game do you think they hear the music or is it just deadly silence to them they're just dancing to no music at all <laughs> <laughs> party up in here <laughs> some of those skeletons they could really move their hips like fucking shakira they got fucking jazz hands like it's nobody's business and they fuck you up oh my god if you go towards them with their hands up they will hit you you have to wait oh, with their hands you. down to not hit you every single time i can never i can never ever not get hit by the skeleton he's always doing the jazz hands always got his hands up always <laughs> smacking me in the face <laughs> to be honest, the skeletons reminded me of King Julian from Madagascar. So the story. Yes, the story. The story of this game. In the game, the player, aka you, control the main character, Cadence. Cadence is the daughter of a famed and beloved treasure hunter. And uh, she's out to try to find him. And while searching for him, she falls into a crypt controlled by the Necrodancer who steals her heart. But not in a not in a loving way. Oh, I didn't even realize you wrote that. Kind of like the way in the uh, what is that? Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, Davy Jones. But it's not Davy Jones. No tentacles in this one. Well, there might be. I don't know if I've gotten that far in the game. <laughs> but uh, steal. Uh, the Necrodancer steals steals your heart and uh, forces you to dance. Stop um, jacking it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry so his you, voice is just so beautiful i get i yeah. finally get to see his face too as you play as cadence you're trying to find your father and you uh play through the game and fight monsters to the beat of the music until you ultimately find your father and uh there's a lot of other stuff the the, the story actually gets kind of in depth in this game as you beat the game, you actually have to beat the game several times with different characters as you unlock the characters and you unlock the characters by beating the game with another character. <gasps> but essentially, that's the whole course of the game. You play as Cadence, but then you play as the mother Melody and then you play as the grandmother Aria. Ooh, it gets pretty in depth. Yes, I'll uh, be on the and then you you ultimately have to destroy uh, what's causing the curse of the Necrodancer. I don't really want to go too far in depth as to what that curse is and what the final boss of the game is and everything like that. Cause I've did quite a lot of research on this and uh, ultimately spoiled it for myself, which kind of sucked. But um, 
But uh, yeah, the story isn't like crazy. Um, it does. It's not complex in any way. It's a very straightforward story of this game. And you're ultimately playing the game over with different characters. But there's nothing wrong with that because like we had mentioned earlier before, this is a roguelite game so that the levels are completely different. Every time you play, it's a new experience. So it doesn't really get old uh, by any means, which is kind of nice. So I probably have this wrong, but as a top, as a 2D top-down rhythm game, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay, thank God. Yeah, it's essentially top-down, kind of more like a three-fourths perspective, not true top-down like Sunless Sea was, but it's also a perspective of how the art is kind of like game old because... Final Fantasy style. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Crypt and Necrodancer as a quotation. Free force of a 2D rhythm based rogue like game that has your actions like movements and fighting sequences timed to the beat of the music. As you progress through the dungeons, you gain access to better equipment, health replenishment, and unlike Curse of the Gods, you don't get fucked. <laughs> well, you still get fucked, but not with a curse. Maybe with a bone, a spear. Although, technically, aren't you cursed because they stole your heart? So so does your ex, but it's true. Plus, in this game, you don't you don't have to like you know roll and parry and shit like that. As it may be, this game is very trial and error. It is very easy to be defeated, and so much as your movements are limited per beat. Different minions require different strategies. Same goes for the crypt bosses as well. But I'm sure that like the more you play through the game, the more you get used to the enemies' patterns and shit like that. Kind of like what would happen if you kept on failing at a normal boss in like a normal game. I'm not even sure what the class is a normal game anymore. But you guys know what I'm on about. Like, if you kept on dying at a boss, you kind of know what's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. You. Get used to the movements, the attack patterns. I'm just kind of glad that there's no, you know, long ass dialogue in this game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's super nice. It just kind of throws you in there and she talks like four times and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And then you just ride into the game. It's kind of the way I like it. I don't oh, think the sure. guy in Curse of the Gods spoke at all. But yeah, I feel good at this game hat off to you but i don't see myself coming back to this game <laughs> well one thing i wanted to go over about when it came uh when it came when it comes to the gameplay oh i can't so uh, oh yeah it does <laughs> but um the game is incredibly easy uh in <laughs> god damn it features it's uh it's incredibly easy uh when it comes to the control scheme because if you're playing this on steam everything is controlled with the arrow keys up down and left right even when you get items and you want to use an item, it's a combination of those two. Uh, I have it on both the Nintendo Switch and on Steam. And on Nintendo Switch, they actually make use of like the shoulder buttons uh, in order to use certain items like L and R or whatever. But on the Steam version, it's the entire game is controlled with just the arrow keys. So it, attacking, moving, uh, using your items, everything. It's a very simple control scheme. And even though it's very simple uh, in terms of the controls, it can be kind of jarring for anybody that's playing because the control scheme is so simple, because you're usually used to having a certain button to attack and you're using the directional buttons in order to move around. But this, it just auto attacks when you get next to an enemy and you try to move into the same space as the enemy. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you, you can play the game with one hand freeze up the other hand for whatever else you want like kermit the frog and miss piggy porn yes <laughs> and also um a lot like other rhythm games you have um like if you match the beat successfully it gives you a coin multiplier if you miss the beat if you're playing with cadence missing the beat doesn't really do anything it makes it more likely for if you're in the path of an enemy for it to be able to hit you if you miss the beat but then there are certain other characters that have weaknesses like if you miss a beat, you die. Or if you miss a certain amount of beats, 
without hitting an enemy or if you have a certain amount of beats without hitting an enemy you die things like that so it does have a few rhythm game elements to it as well other than just the music obviously which is amazing by the way oh and another thing about the game is uh the music in most areas does not loop so Mm -mm. it actually gives you a time limit on each floor and if you don't beat the beat the floor by the time the song ends uh it'll just say song end next level and just drop you through a trap door into the floor to the next zone yeah which is an easy way to progress through the game uh but ultimately you're missing out on items you're missing out on gold Mm -hmm. uh and all other benefits of actually exploring the full zone so you have to take that into consideration yeah and if you play with Dove, though, because she has, I think it's the ring. I don't know if it's the ring of peace or if it's just that she's peaceful. She, the the song actually, I think it starts over or plays the next track. She doesn't actually jump down to the next level like that. She's the only one that doesn't. I thought that was pretty interesting. Oh, I've never that is played interesting. With another, yeah, I've never played with another character, though. I've only stuck with, stuck with Cadence. Well, speaking of which, why don't you go ahead and get into your experience of the game? Oh, me? Okay. Yes, you. This is one of my most favorite games. Um, it actually it it takes a lot of concentration to play. Um, so I like to zone into it and play it, and kind of like only pay attention to that. And just jam out to the music, which is really good music. And even if like you can get, because I'll die in the in a in the zone maybe within the first 30 seconds a lot of the times, but you can do the quick restart. You don't have to go back and spend your diamonds or anything like that. So you can just keep playing over and over again. And I like that you're not sent back to the lobby unless you want to go back to the lobby. So you can just get a whole lot of gameplay in, and then you can also stop playing it really quickly. Banjo fucking blank. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst part about having our webcams on is that we're trying to mess with each other as we're doing it. We're like, yeah, nobody can see this shit. So we have to oh cut this God. out. I give it a 10 out of a 10. It's one of my favorite games. I, I just like to play shit. it just for fun. Yeah. I'm not good at it by any means, but I think it's fun. I think it's very replayable despite that I'm not good at it just because the music is really good. And there's just something satisfying about hopping to the beat, seeing the little squares on the floor, move around whenever you have the multiplier, being able to actually learn the moves of an enemy and kill the enemy. It's just very satisfying all around. So, and the soundtrack is really amazing. And I listen to it even when I'm not playing the game. Well, people seem to enjoy your life and I don't understand why they enjoy it. Oh no. (sighs) Don't you <laughs> sigh at me. I will sigh at you because I'm deeply disappointed. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Peach is going to get kicked in the counter again. <laughs> okay, uh, Logan, do you want to go into your experience? I thought I did. Did you? It was yeah. very tiny. He didn't like it. Yeah, he said he hated it. I didn't it. say that. I didn't <laughs> like it. I didn't say he that. He said you probably like won't it. go back to it. Yeah. I okay. Most likely it won't. So go that's back to all it. on your experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Why didn't why didn't you like it? What didn't you like about it? I think I think it's because like anytime I tried to play, I always had something going on in the background. And you know, days need the day that I wanted to play it, I snapped my leg. Oh no. So it's kinda like yeah. this game was a like endeavor of bad luck. Anytime I try to go near it, something bad just happens. Yeah. It's the game. Never play it again. I you'll can totally break, see you'll that. never snap your leg again. <laughs> but don't do that anyway. So, Banjo, you had had this game for a while on your Steam library. Did did you did you have fun with it? He could have the Holy oh. Grail in his Steam library and he wouldn't even know. <laughs> that is true. Um, I actually really enjoyed this game. It was... Uh, not was what I was expecting, really, when I got into it. I didn't see anything about it. I guess I didn't really have any expectations on the game when I got into it. But it was super fun, and the music was fucking bumping. Like, I absolutely loved the soundtrack to this game, to a point where I went on to Bandcamp and I bought the soundtrack to this game so I could just have it. And I've been listening to it nonstop since I purchased it uh, in the car and at work. The the gameplay um, 
is far more challenging and difficult than I thought it would be. I figured, okay, well, it's just a rhythm game. Just move to the beat. Oh, it's more difficult than that. There's a lot of strategy involved. All the enemies do different things. They move at different beats. Some of them don't move. Some of them attack weird. And uh, it took me a lot to get used to that to the point where I still haven't beat zone one in it, but I've come back to it far more than a lot of the games we've played on this podcast. <laughs> um, I I actually ended up buying it on the Switch because it was on sale for like four bucks so I could play it on the go. And I've been, I've played it a few times. I've actually gotten further on the Switch version than I did on the Steam version, but it is a lot of fun. I really did enjoy it. It's very challenging, that's for sure, but it's it's a good kind of challenging to me. And the music is so catchy, and I just, 100% the reason why I keep coming back to this game is because of the music. It's just really good. Um, it's, as far as everything goes uh, when it comes to the game and my scoring, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. It wasn't a perfect game, but it is very good. And it's actually got me to the point where I want to buy the, uh, the cadence of Hyrule, the legend of Zelda version of this game. I'm really looking forward to uh, playing that. And that one might go up in rating only because of my bias and my love for legend of Zelda, but I'm definitely planning on picking that game up because I enjoyed this game so much. I'm excited to hear the, um, it's supposed to be remixed music, remixed Zelda music. I'm excited to hear those remixes. I bet they're awesome. Oh yeah, awesome. dude. Same. I'm so pumped for that. Hasn't it been out for a while? What, the Cadence of Hyrule? I, I yeah. think it was 2018. I have it right here. Uh, June the 13th, 2019. So still recent? Relatively Kinda. recent. Some more recent than Breath of the Wild, though. So who wants to go into their experience now? One left. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> well, guess what? Three out of ten. This game fucking sucks. Oh, no! No, no, no. surprise there. <laughs> hey, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> you don't like many games. That's what I mean. Excuse me? I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm sorry. This music is absolutely bumping. I, uh, th- this is like a really cool concept to me. Uh, the the way that the, that you attack and that you move, it's uh, it's a little strange, but it's you know it's novel, and I cannot get past the first level because I can't figure out how the fuck to do it. Uh, I have no idea. So I think it was right uh, about rhythm games. I don't think really are my style. Like truthfully, I'd probably give this an eight out of 10 because everything about it just works really well together, but I just can't figure out how to play it the right way. So uh, <laughs> for some reason, doing it. you just have to keep doing it. Yeah. I'll probably I'll probably keep trying to play it and keep trying to figure it out. But my initial experience, I don't think, was very good. I got actually started to get like angry and frustrated because like, oh, God, God damn it. I can't get past this first level. Like, fuck this shit. I'm about ready to throw my controller. So honestly, it's not that bad. It's just really frustrating to me for some reason. And I don't know why. And I am the God amongst all of you that was able to beat Dark Souls uh twice so i don't know what's <laughs> wrong with me but for some reason just this game just didn't jive with me even though the music was the music is amazing it's very bumping i got through the second area of the first level and then this dragon came out of nowhere and just skyrim <laughs> and yeah he first round on my ass right back to the the lobby of this entire this entire game so yeah i'd say an eight out of ten everything works but it's not my style so hello and 
good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are and listening to this uh, bad boy. This is Benjamin Dude Guy, and welcome to the first ever mid-roll message that we've ever done on this podcast. Uh, if it, I just wanted to take a little bit of uh, time uh, while this is uh, finishing editing to let you know if this episode seemed a little uh, different, it's because we actually recorded for the first time ever with our webcams on so that we got to make our jokes and bits and silly little antics and everything while looking at each other's beautiful faces. Uh, For you guys that don't know, we don't record this in the same room. This is all done completely remotely. I mean, I'm sure that it seemed at least partially remotely because one of our friends is from Scotland, you know, the good old chubby nerd Logan. So we're all from different corners of the world, all over the place, scattered to the winds. So we we record this remotely, and typically we only record audio with our voices, but we decided that we wanted to try something different and record with webcams so that we can kind of see and feed off each other's energies and stuff. And it's definitely something we're going to be doing more in the future, but it's going to probably take a little bit of time to get used to. So... Welcome to the journey as we try to do our best to make this podcast as best we can for you guys. Uh, I also wanted to take the time to uh, welcome Guinea Pig Poop as a full-fledged, full-time member of the podcast. Hooray! I hope you'll all uh, join me in celebration for this. We decided instead of having her on as a guest uh, on occasion, we would have her as a full-time, full-fledged member it's because she's hilarious and she definitely brings a charm with her that we certainly can't pull off uh, as it were. So it's nice to have her on for this whole thing and crap. So we, so we just kind of like tied her up and threw her in the trunk and we now force her to do our bidding. So there's that. But uh, enough of this, enough of this uh, chatting, might take this time uh, in each of the episodes as like this little mid-roll message to tell you what's going on, if there's anything different or any type of updates or whatever that we have for you guys. So I guess this has been going on long enough. I babble a lot. I'm probably not the best person to do these kinds of things. So uh, I'm going to shut up now and let you guys get back to uh, the podcast. Much love to you. He's good game. Are Would you guys class a six-inch fence as a gnome fence? What? Yeah. Uh, I told you guys I tripped over a six-inch fence, didn't I? Like, yeah. and that's how I basically almost snapped my leg. It was your own dick, wasn't it? No. <laughs> it was a six inch fence and everyone's saying to me, oh, it's a gnome fence since it's that fucking tiny. Why would somebody have a six inch fence? <laughs> oh, I don't no. know. Ask my auntie Kirsty. I was at her house, like moving flowers from uh, the funeral car to our back garden and I tripped. Dude, the fairies are pissed at you right now for breaking oh, their fence. Oh, they're super mad. I didn't break their fence. Their fence broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you kicked mushrooms. If you see the mushrooms that are in a circle, don't ever kick them. The fairies will get really pissed at you. There was no mushrooms. <laughs> oh, this could have been from years ago. They hold a grudge. Yeah, fucking Tinkerbell. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, I was told Little Nightmares is better played with a controller than keyboard. Um, nom 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 nom. I have cheesecake cookies right beside me. I just can't be fucked eating them. That sounds delicious. I have wheat. That does sound real good. Hey, strawberry cheesecake cookies also is eh. Not a big fan of strawberries. I don't hate it. I just don't mind it. I got some strawberry banana yogurt thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I love bananas, and I even love the fake flavor of bananas, but these are supposed to be real fruit chunks in it, and I'm telling you, there was no banana flavor in it whatsoever. I was so disappointed. I was like, I'm just going to crush a banana up and put it in here. I only eat gogurt. The fuck is a gogurt? It's the little tubes. <laughs> gogurt yeah. is literally just yogurt in a tube. 
Ah, oh, frub. Frub. <laughs> yeah, whatever you just said with your mouth. What the fuck is that? Gogurt, apparently, in you Scotland. Say it's frub. Yeah, frub. Frub. F- frub. frub. Fruity yogurt and a tube. Frub. That sounds like a Scottish <laughs> insult. <laughs> we need one of those. A frub. I've noticed that the more time I spend with you people, the more my Scottishness comes out. That's okay. Yeah, we. you need to make a point to use the Scottish insults that you've learned from Logan in the future episodes. You know, so he knows you're paying attention. Fucking fan, Dan. My cat is a cunt. My dog is also a cunt. Oh no, you Americans can't say that word. Oh no. I say what I want. I said it. I said the naughty word. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that hurt. (laughs) I had too much candy. Fuck yeah, dude. It's Easter Sunday. Hell yeah. Yay! (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) I'd laugh if that heavy thing knocked him out. Oh, God. I just got attacked by Laffy Taffy. Was it? Funny. What is that supposed to mean? You heard me. I don't get it. I had a Laffy Taffy. <sighs> I don't have any candy at all, so. I love Laffy Taffy because it comes with the best jokes. For instance, what will a chatty caterpillar become? I don't know what. <laughs> a social butterfly. Aww. What music does Peter Cottontail or the Easter Bunny listen to while he hides the Easter eggs? X gonna give it to you. <laughs> All stars, hip hop. <laughs> okay, so Peach just was the closest. To you. <laughs> Peach just was the closest. What did one cannibal say to the other when they were eating a clown? Does this taste funny mm. to you? God damn it! <laughs> what are we even doing here? We should be comedians. I don't know, but I have a lot of really weird shit for you guys. You just wait. Oh, I'm just somehow never for any other day. what are we playing in the next podcast a lot of nightmares and that's it that's the perfect segue yeah (laughs) what are we playing in the next because your wife is a fucking little nightmare (laughs) do we really want the question is do you really want that in the podcast i was gonna say because we can we collect material and then we just cut out whatever we don't want so we collect a lot of shit that we may not even use like pigeons. We can cut pigeons out of our lives. Ships and also bread. I I was all, I was like just talking about how like cuz they gather a bunch of shit but don't use it. What? Do they cut in your country do they gather pigeon shit to fertilize the fields? In Probably. <laughs> On a very hot day you can just smell the cow shit in the fields. Oh, that's the same here. Yeah, completely. Especially in the south. There's a lot of cow shit and a lot of chicken shit. We drove through Iowa, which was just, it's basically flat and on fire. That's all. That's the only way you can describe that state. Anytime you you roll down the window, all you hear is... (laughs) (laughs) No, the cows cows catch on fire and they turn into hamburgers. Why do you call it hamburgers if there's no ham? Uh, Because they originated from Hamburg. Really? Yeah. yeah. My exi- entire existence is a lie. Of course, if you go to a party and you ask somebody for a beef burger, they're going to call the police on you. <laughs> uh, I will ask True. for a cheeseburger because burgers are basically awful without cheese. You're right. And pickles. This is true. Uh, well, yeah. oh, pickles. pickles are disgusting. I love pickles. I thought you said pit bulls for a second, and I was like, <laughs> "Can you give me a pit bull patty?" <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine that you open up your big mac and all you miss a word wang. So that's where you've been all this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Peach's breathing out to make a disappointment. 
I think so. <laughs> I'm not coming out. I think you broke him. Uh... <laughs> I am like crazy sweaty over here now. Oh, we can see that. that. Get it. (laughs) Oh my God. It was ridiculous. Uh, That just image is burned into my brain at this point where somebody gets a burger, opens it up and says, Mr. Worldwide. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Are we actually ready to do something here? Oh my God. This is turning into a nightmare. What? Don't type in Pitbull Rules 84. Okay. Don't. Oh God! Why oh, would you no. do this? What have you done? <laughs> Why would you do this? Why am I only getting furry art? <laughs> A lot of furry art. Type in oh, Pitbull shit. Singer. <laughs> I'm gonna glaze that world on your forehead. <laughs> I can see that smirk features. <laughs> I'm just thinking. <laughs> Is that a is that a pickup line? <laughs> you go to a bar and say, "Hey, girl, I'm gonna glaze you like a Krispy Kreme donut." <laughs> hey, girl, do you like donuts? Because I'm gonna glaze their buns. <laughs> Speaking of glazing buns, what are we playing on the next podcast? That is not a segue. In the next podcast, we're going to be talking about the game Little Nightmares. Where the which... Little Nightmare is Banjo being chased by Pitbull. <laughs> Do you think he calls himself Mr. Worldwide because he has like the earth tattooed onto like, his nutsack? No, it's because his dick wraps around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just as wide. It's only about an inch long, though. Oh no, Mr. Worldwide threw us all off our our axis. We're going to (laughs) crash into the sun. And he's just, Mr. Worldwide! (laughs) He's just helicoptering. (laughs) (laughs) Makes the earth spin faster. God damn it. (laughs) Little Nightmares is a puzzle platform horror adventure game (laughs) developed by, what is that? Tarsier Studios? Did I say that right? Tarsier, Tarsier Studios. I thought it was a Bandai game. It, it well, it, it's published by Bandai Namco, ah. but it's developed by Tarsier Studios. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it is available on quite a few platforms: uh, Windows, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Google Stadia. <laughs> Ooh, cyber cyberpunk was on the Google Stadia too. <laughs> was it? Ah, uh, that re- ran a, a crisp two frames per second. I'm sure. Um, so Little Nightmares is a game I've I've never played. Um, I haven't played it at all. Is it supposed to be? Uh, is it a horror game? It's, it's supposed to be Ookum Spookum. Horror. Uh, it's like a survival horror thing. So I don't know. It's like a. Very Tim to be Horton, kind of creepy. Not Tim Horton. Tim Burton inspired. <laughs> Tim Horton. Tim Horton. Yeah, uh, every character was created as a claymation at first. Yeah. And then, so kind of like Coraline, Nightmare Before Christmas. So it was made by the fast food restaurant, Shane? <laughs> it, you know, it's funny that you say that. Tim Hortons is a Canadian multinational fast food chain based in Toronto. Because essentially, in this game, you play it as a little girl trying to escape an iron vessel uh, called the Maw, which is inhabited by uh, creatures that eat her beings. So it's like if the donuts at Tim Horton were trying to escape, that's you. You're the donut in this game. Stop calling me out. I've actually... uh, I, I've never played the game, but I've actually watched it played a couple of times. I had a friend uh, that had this game that played it on his PlayStation 4 for a little while. And the graphics on it are kind of creepy. It is it is very atmospheric kind of game from what I had witnessed and saw. Um, i am always wanted to play the game myself, but I say that about a lot of things and I don't do them. But now I'm going to be doing them because we have a podcast. I don't know exactly how I'm going to be um, 
receiving this game uh, only because it's not my particular type of play style. I'm not a big fan of like 2D side scroller games, uh. especially with puzzle elements. I, for some reason, it's just not my genre, but I am interested to see how this game turns out because if the story is interesting enough, it might keep me hooked. So I guess we will see on the next one where my opinions lie. Apparently the newer game, Little Nightmares 2, that came out uh, two months ago is actually a prequel to this game. Basically Mm -hmm. at the end of Little Nightmares 2 is the start of Little Nightmares 1. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, interesting. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see where my opinions lie uh, in the next one after I've given this game a mm. go. Well, if you're thinking you're going to be shit scared of this, just remember Alan Sharp comes out in a few weeks. Ooh, that is true. Yes. So, Logan, what is your prediction for this game? I have seen so many YouTubers play this game, and I've always wanted to play it, so I'm excited. But I do know that some segments of the game is going to creep me the fuck out. A lot like Alan Sharp. Okay, Alan Sharp I could probably deal with, because I'm going into that ready, but less... I think it's because it's kind of the characters are like, kind of claymation, if you get what I mean. Yeah, kind of the Uncanny Valley type thing. Or like what makes Coraline creepy. Just looks... Yeah, has that look to kind of like Plus, like, the the shapes and the formations of things. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if this is going to be a good game. So, Guinea, what would you say your prediction for this game is going to be? Um, I think that it's going to be a really fun and cute game. I've also never played it before, but one of my friends used to cute. stream it on Twitch. Cute. A cute, scary game. Cute, like how Coraline is cute. <laughs> like, oh, that's cute! Yeah, it's a really good movie. But um, so I've seen her play a little bit of it. Coraline gave me nightmares. <laughs> well, it was cute nightmares, though, wasn't it? Oh, I love that weird movie. button eyes. Oh, so I think I think I'm gonna enjoy it. Uh, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to feel about this game. What is this? Uh, was this a? Uh, is this 3D or is this? I still have tor- Tim Hortons up. <laughs> I need to get rid of that. Is this a? Uh, 2D uh, or is this a 3D uh, game? I've never seen anything. I say it's 2.5. It <laughs> it's 3D graphics, but it plays as a 2D style platformer. Okay. So, but it's supposed to be a horror game. So I don't know how yeah. I'm going to feel about it. Um, I am intrigued about the horror elements of it. It sounds really cute, but also horror. So we'll see how that kind of goes. I will give you guys a little bit of help right here, right now. The gnomes will fuck you up when you're trying to hide. That's all I'll tell you. They fucked me up on Friday, and now they're going to fuck you up in this game. (laughs) They (laughs) fucked me on Friday, and they're going to come to your house, and they're going to fuck you, too. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I didn't mail order. (laughs) Well... I guess that's all of our uh, our predictions on this game. So, uh, do we have a Scottish insult of the week? No, but uh, let's look at the Steam <clears throat> reviews for this. Oh, good idea! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, I like this one. Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Big spook. I Man, just these guys love are these. wordsmiths. Big spoop. Ah, uh, the next Shakespeare. So we don't have a Scottish insult? I have a southern insult. Ah, oh, yes. Mm. What is a southern insult we're looking for? If it's the N-word, don't say it. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. I'm not getting oh, my one. God. Ah, uh, and... <laughs> um... That is so bad. <laughs> I have a lot, and I had to choose which one to read, so I'm going to go with the one that will be the most fun to say. So I'm going <laughs> to put on my, my southern, my southern no, accent. No. Okay, before you, before you do it, I found a review on uh, Crypto Necromancer that made, me, that made me do that stupid laugh. Read I'm it. deaf, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave a review for Crypto the Necro Dancer. Do it. Oh Why you leave that review? I'm gonna read the Southern insult. I don't care if it was 40 years ago when she won the high school spelling bee. Not everybody can spell hippopotamus, and that's at least something she can hang on to. <laughs> Why are all Southern insults like thinly veiled? Yeah, like- yeah, they yeah. are. <laughs> What does that mean? Bless her heart. Bless her heart. That means that <laughs> you're you're not saying something insulting, but you mean it insulting. Yeah. And so, like, if they come back at you, like, with, well, what the fuck? What do you mean I can spell hippopotamus? Be like, I mean, that's a good thing. Not everybody can spell hippopotamus, Brenda. Can you spell it now? Yeah, Brenda, you dumb bitch. I know. <laughs> I can't spell hippopotamus, but I have fourteen. You apparently can't <laughs> oh say God. hippopotamus either. Look, Brenda has five teeth. Thank you very much. No, she has she... four teeth and a ten opener. <laughs> I was gonna make that joke. <laughs> you stole it from me. God, imagine that having four teeth and a foreskin cleaner. <laughs> 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 What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> I just wanted to see Banjo choke. <laughs> I, th- I think maybe you killed him a little. Uh, I couldn't reach my cough button. Fuck you, Logan. I guess that'll about do it uh, for this week's podcast. Sorry, my brain's moving a little slow. Uh, if you made it this far, you've you got some chutzpah. I think that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking abandoned it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yep. Thank you all again for listening to the podcast. I think I said that already. You can find links to all of our social media at our website at joystick'sandlunatics.com. You can follow our Twitter directly at Joystick Loons, L-O-O-N-S. And you can follow our independent Twitter account. <laughs> Mine's at <laughs> Banjo Man DG. And you can find my individual <laughs> Twitter account at Overpowered Peach. My Twitter is at Guinea Pig Poop, P-E-E-G. And mine is at the Terminator One. Make sure you check me out on Twitch. All right, we're fucking ending this thing. Yeah, thank God. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Goodbye.